All right. Um, should we try to start on time, just for once? <laughs> Would be a good idea. All right. Um, if people want to come in, there's still a little bit of seats around. Um, so this might gonna be a little bit off tempo. Uh, might gonna take 60 minutes. If anybody have questions on, uh, as we go along, just jump up to the mic and yell, or just yell from your seat, be like, hey, what did you mean there? Um, a lot of these are new concepts and new like, thinkings that um, we've been doing for the last X amount of years that you might not um, you know, used to. So there might gonna be some new concepts, we're gonna be like a little bit, why are you doing it like that? Anyways, um, it is now 11 o'clock and I'm Ready to start. I'm so happy that Dries warmed you all up for my keynote. Um, so that's always nice. I've been all relaxed this morning and was drinking coffee and saw all of these wonderful slides and wishes people had for the front end and how apparently the front end doesn't matter in Drupal. I might gonna comment on that at some point during these slides. Um, now that I'm in the US, I also know that people have a tendency to say, oh, he has a bad language. I cannot help that, I'm a Dane. We don't even have the word please in our language. <laughs> so that's how it is. And yes, if anybody have following the uh, TV shows Vikings, it is pretty much spot on. Um, that's just how we are today, a very peaceful people until we get pissed the fuck up, hence the keynote. All right, so let's go. Um, uh, 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 this thing called, so this is me, Morton DK, actually, it's wonderful to be in New Orleans because being a Dane called Morton, there's two places in the US they can say my name. One place is up in, in Minnesota. Apparently they know how to pronounce Morton. The rest of the world here, it's Morton because apparently I'm a salt. I do think you should all sprinkle a little bit of Morton on everything, but that's a whole other thing. But in this beautiful part of the world, we do have another king, which is Morton Anderson, the most scoring player in the NFL. How he is not in the Hall of Fame is a scandal. I'm just gonna put it out like that. Anyways, if you don't know who I am, I'm the one who says badass mofo on my name tag, okay? So, um, I run a, a small shop called Geek Royale out of Copenhagen. I do have a ton of my stickers with me. Uh, I also do work for a company called Tech One Consulting. We're building big, 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 complicated websites with a bunch of really good nerds. Uh, I used to be the angry themer in this magazine called uh, the Drupal Watchdog. Um, and I'm also classy maintainer, which is uh, one of our core, core new themes. Um, basically, if you want to ask me on anything, go with uh, Modern DK. Drupal Twig is going to be our uh, hashtag for anything. So just put out stuff on Twitter, that's kind of our main communication stuff, and uh, DC Nola as well. Um, so the DK is for diff killer, by the way, just so you know, that's how it's been for the last many years. I just launched my website finally on Drupal 8, and it's kind of broken in multiple different browsers, but doesn't matter, it's finally up again. Yes, I sat in Atlanta, and I pushed the code right as I was walking in on the flight, and what was the first response from people? Not good to see your website up more than awesome, you put SVG files in line into a link. No, it's broken in my browser, is this button supposed to look like that? Thank you for that, by the way. Anyways, Drupal Trick is where you're gonna put it so, for the last three or four years, I, no, that's actually a lie. For the last 10 years, I've been in the Drupal world. For the last nine years and 360 days, I've been bitching and moaning about what was wrong in the front end of Drupal. Um, I've been actually in this industry for 20 years this year, which is kind of scary. Anybody here who's 20 years old? Dude, you act like you're 13. That's not being 20 years old. <laughs> Anyways, I've gotten one question when I've traveled the world. This is kind of just some of the places I've been out speaking about this thing. And I got one question all the time around this whole like Drupal 8 thing. It's like, how am I going to do it right? It's not about, can I do it this way or that way or this way or that way? No, it's like, I just want to do it right. And my first answer to that was, well, you know, um, you can just do it this way or that way. And like, hey, can you just give me one way of doing these things? And then I'm going to figure out the best of them. And for once in my life, I got a little bit nervous because I was like, you know, I have a whole room here, front end as we have, Drupal is fairly large system. Uh, everybody actually asking me this question. Why are you asking me about it? I don't know. I mean, well, well, you kind of should know because you've been here for how many years? How many years have you been doing that? Who else should know? And I was looking around the room and you know, John Alpin, who was just in here, he ran away because like, no, no, Drupal 7, that was my fault. Drupal 8, that's your fault, Morton. I was like, damn it. So, um, you know, I... Uh, we kind of have to take some of this responsibility on. Um, but before we dive into that, we need to do one thing. We just need to take one step back. Four years ago, 2012, that was when we finally said, okay, we really need to fix this theming system. Um, 
This is in Munich, uh, you see, you can see John, you can see me, you can see uh, Jen Lampton. And in Munich, uh, four years ago, we had a sl small little discussion. Nine hours at the whiteboard where I defended everybody who wanted to argue against not changing the theme system happened there. Um, but there was one session that Jen did where she talked about we need a designer-friendly theme system. That is the thing we're trying to build. We're not trying to build a JSON parser or all kinds of other things. We're trying to build a theme system that is easy for normal people to use. Or my kind of people, you know, the designers, those who like to do pretty stuff. Um, because at that point, you know, we were not even speaking to this group. We were just like nerding out, um, which kind of got into be an issue. So we created a bunch of different uh, principles. First of all, in Drupal 8, we'll start from nothing. Nothing our base point. We don't start with a fuck ton of different classes, or markup, or perspective. Or kind of start with nothing and build on top of that. Um, built on real use cases. If 80% of people is doing this way, how about we just solve their problem instead of trying to solve every problem in the world? Uh, provide tools so we can find stuff, make it visible so you can actually see your templates, um, consistency in everything, and last but not least, don't dumb it down. Because, believe it or not, front-enders are not, or themers, or designers, or what we call ourselves, it's not complete idiots. Some are, but it's not like a status of like, oh, you work in the front end, oh, you play with crayons, I better like give you this little field you can play with it because you cannot figure this stuff out. I mean. It is us who put the stuff out to these six million different devices, right? That's kind of what we do. So anyways, the thing is, you need a website. So you need UX, you need design, you need content, you need code, you need DevOps, you need all of these things to run. Good, how's that gonna come out? Well, here's the thing, if there's no theme, you cannot get anything out of it. It's not gonna be able to show anywhere. Um, another thing is that the theme should be pretty by default. How do we build these things? Because um, if we have no theme, this is what we have. This is JSON. This is the stuff Drupal would then pretty much put out if we didn't put it through a theme. Actually, this is pretty JSON. This is Drupal's JSON. Here we go. So, when I hear doing a keynote that like 20% things we should have, and like one of the lowest things is having better tools for the front end, this is Drupal without a front end. It is, that's the whole thing. You wanna build a better UX experience? How are you gonna build that? With HTML and CSS and JavaScript. At the end of the day, that is what we put out. If we don't have the right tools, if we cannot control this from the ground of every fucking little inch we're gonna control it, we cannot build these things. So it doesn't matter that somebody's sitting in sales somewhere dreaming about us building better experiences if we don't have the tools for them. Maybe we have a little light in the dark. What do you think that is? Small little thing coming out. Drupal 8 trick. That is our light in the darkness. That is the thing we're gonna build all these things on. Because um, fundamental, this is about controls. Control of markup and CSS. It is not about the numbers of divs or classes we put into it. It's about controlling every little thing of it. It's not 100% control, it's 101% control. And it's not a request or a wish, it's how it's gonna be. Okay, any questions? Nobody have the nuts to stand up and say, well, I really think you should. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's build this the right way. Um, let's start about this. Forget Drupal 7. Can you, can you feel it? Just forget about it. Ah, because it looks like this. <laughs> so let's do this. Ah, how does that feel? How does that feel? Drupal 7 is now our, our blood. So let's start where we should start at our base team, our basic building block that we are building on. Um, it's pretty simple. Base theme, stable. This is the lowest level you can get. Because here's how we built Drupal Core. So up there you have, you have Core, you have Stable, you have Classy. Um, Drupal Core and Stable, if we look at that, then we have trip themes and then you have your own themes, right? That's kind of our whole family of themes we have. Um, by the way, I have all of my slides already, they're already online. I'm gonna push the URL to it, that very last, and you cannot guess the URL, so like, stop trying to do that. Um, so you don't got, have to go panning more like, am I even gonna get all this data in? Anyways, stable. Stable is this wonderful thing. It's a complete clone of Drupal Core. So all of Core's templates are now in the theme called stable. Stable is um, you know, a replica of Drupal 8, which means that we can begin to fix stuff in Drupal 8, because believe it or not, when we came up with Drupal 8 like four or five months ago, it was not perfectly done. I mean, we might gonna find a little issue or two. Back in Drupal 7 country, we could not change anything. So 
Now let's say here, this is, um, if you go into to links.html.twig, you're gonna figure out there's actually a hard-coded inline class in there. That, of course, we cannot have, because uh, it can mess with your version of your inline class. So probably in 8.2, we're gonna remove that. If you're not using, um, so if you look at your theme, you've got, you got the inline class, and now you make it blue, crap. So I, if I don't use stable, and you know, we patch it, we remove it from Drupal core, what's gonna happen? now your stop is gonna be away. So don't rely on core on anything, rely on stable or rely on classy. Um, the difference between core and uh, stable and classy is basically this is what stable puts out, a wrapper and the data, that's it. Um, classy puts out a bunch of classes for you so you have some default. It's kinda like our way of figuring out how we could do this. So classy is our, uh, um, Stable is our way of protecting ourselves against all the things we did not fix back um, when we came out with Drupal Core. Um, so you can do whatever you want to do with your themes. Um, if you go base theme false, as you can do, we're just going to get Drupal Core elements in, I promise you we will break your themes because we will fix whatever goes on in Drupal Core. So just don't do that. Now you have been warned. So we're not going to see anybody whine in the issue, who like, why is my stuff broken? I went base theme false. You always have a base theme. You have always had a base theme. Back in the days, it was just called Drupal 7 or Drupal 6. Um, now, use stable or use classy. If you want to have classes in, use that. So, um, documentation for that, and I wrote a little article on it for on my brand new spanking website. Um, so, I'm talking about code separation a lot. So, uh, so why is that? Well, because you know we want to have the theme to be in control of the markup and CSS. That's always been a thing. And the way we're doing that is... Um, basically, every time we come into a template, what you're first going to have, this is where we define all of our classes. We define the variable, put in all the classes. Now you can merge them around, you can build whatever you want to do. And then we have the HTML that is separated down again, and you can drill into the data and grab the data out. Because, um, you know, HTML and CSS is, is, is one thing you should always do is always put it inside of your template. Don't put anything in a variable. Don't put any, no, don't put a class in your preprocess. Always put a variable. Provide the variable for your template. Your future uh, you will help you out with that. Um, and this fine gentleman down here, he put a question to me yesterday. He's like, yo, um, what if I want to theme my stuff based on a node ID? My answer to that is, of course, no. Don't do that. You are wrong. We also all know we're going to cowboy things. So let us just start out by cowboying this example. Um, so my cowboy element here is I need to have this hot rocking cowboy class merge into my body. Um, and it's gonna put in this image of the trick cowboy. What you do that is then you go into a preprocess and the preprocess I go in and I taste on the note. So uh, such vanilla, vanilla is the theme name. Uh, preprocess is the preprocess and HTML is my HTML template. So this is where I'm gonna send it. Uh, I then go in, I test on the note, go in Drupal, road routes, get parameter, get that note. If there is a note, Create a new variable, I call it NIT, N-I-D, node ID, and get me the node ID. Fair enough. Um, now my node ID is ready for my template. Um, so this is just to sum it up. Um, so what I'm doing now inside of my template, I say set body classes, that's an array within Twig. Um, I test uh, if there's a node ID that's equal. In this uh, instance, 158 node ID, and then I have now a class that is hot rocking cowboy. Um, which in my example, when I was just doing this code, is just yanking in, this was a hot pink background. Because um, basically, we can do these if else's inside of Twig that we can do all over. If you begin to build your classes that way, that's when you begin to have the absolute control of it. Um, so basically it goes, you know, set some level of a, a variable, test on something, you know, are you gonna get the cowboy, or are you gonna get nada? That's the two variation of it. Um, and that's how, oh, let's just go back one step. Um, that's how if every time you look into these predefined classes, this area set, if you think in that way, you now have the control of what actually goes on in your theme. Um, so the other thing that we have in Drupal, in Drupal 8, is that everything is a template. In Drupal 7, it used to be functions. Now we took all the functions, we ripped them out, and we killed them. And killing all the functions was a good thing. Actually, so good, I had to take a picture the day we removed the last function, and that is actually the commit comment that says, die theme functions, die. Um, no, so in Drupal 8, now out the box, you have at least 135 different template files. That's a ton of files. How many have actually worked with, um, with Drupal 8 so far? Okay, who has not? Who is like, what are you even talking about? Okay, I hope you can follow, else just, you know, 
ask questions later on. Um, there's a session on Friday as well. That's got to be like more fundamentals. Um, this is kind of a, here's a crazy new idea. So if I have 135 different templates, my life is going to be miserable if they're all in one, one file. So I got to be two different ways you can organize this. Either you can go like the, the normal, the way we designed the system up first. That was like going, here's, your, here's my templates. This is classy. Inside of classy, I have them grouped in these different groups. So one for layouts, one for all the blocks, one for all the views, one for content, one for edit, one for fields, navigation elements, data sets, forms, and so forth. So every element is like grouped by what it does. That's all fine until at some point you have a ton of files because you want to you know, fix every little piece of markup. Um, so it's basically like, it's, it's thought this way. And you have these different elements, you can call them in, you have different variations of them and file names. Um, and you're going to end up with this. This is kind of the different templates that you can use. You can use inside your theme. You can call them and drop them in. Fair enough. This gives you a lot of variations. Um, and you can, uh, we still have, uh, we have one big library file. We call in our CSS files and go, go it that way. Um, and, and that's all good. Um, the, the problem can be that at some point, um, you're going to get a little bit tired of this because, you know, you go in and you look at the node, and this node is, now where's my field at? Okay, so my field is over my field folder and so forth. So I was reading up on all this component-based uh, front-end stuff, and I go, I wonder what that is. Because I was beginning to put all my stuff into one folder. Here's my node. Let me put everything in my node into my folder. Here's my navigation. Everything into the navigation, beginning to group stuff that way. Um, I ran into some really fun air quotes for the mic uh, issues around that, and that's one of some of the things we're going to look at. So my whole idea here is I have base templates. These base templates show off me um, the like basic elements of how a thing comes out. As you can see, there is, uh, let's see here, there's a container, there's a field, and there's a paragraph. There's like base, basic templates that we're going to put out. Then, um, if you look through it, uh, that's all my base stuff. Then I have another folder called components. And if you look at some of these, I have like, a folder called comment, another one called footer, the one called header. I have a hero, I have a logo, I have a message, a navigation, note teaser, powered by Drupal. So now I'm not building it within the idea of what Drupal does. It's more like, what, is, what does this do on my page? Hey, this is my navigation. Just take me all of my navigation files, put it in one place. Because then when I have to work with it later on, I don't have to go into my image folder and figure out what did we call those images. You know when you look at your image folder after three years on a project and it has like all of this crap in it and you have no idea where it came from. You're like, should we just delete it? And like, let's try. And your site just explodes in <laughs> possible ways because you have no idea where it comes. Um, it's probably going to be just as bad in six to eight months, but right now it feels really good. <laughs> anyway, so the next folder I'm working on is called layout. And um, anybody here use smacks as the terminology? Yes. Can you spot a pattern on how I built my templates? Yep, exactly. It's kind of the same thinking of smacks. You have a base, you have these elements, you have these layouts, have these components. I don't have themes inside of my theme because the meta got too high there. I was trying to figure out some fun way, but it missed. Um, and then my CSS file, CSS folder, I still have a CSS folder, but that's only for the base and the layout, like the basic elements. Then I take all of my CSS, all of my image files, all of my elements I need for a different component, and I put that all into one folder. Just going to warn you, the first time you have a CSS file right next to a template file, right next to your SVG file, it feels like you're doing something wrong. Um, but I also kind of like to do that because I'm a bad boy, something, no, ah, God, yeah, it's too early for that, sorry for that. Anyways, let's go back to the point. Um, so here's my, my folder. It's like templates, components, node. Inside of node, I had node HTML the trick. I have field dash node dash foo, field node bar, and so forth. Then I have li the libraries file. I then call in, and I inject my CSS and my JavaScript files in. Now everything here is encapsulated in this little folder. Here's all of my node stuff. Um, the problem is now that if I just put my node, node folder and I have a field template, and I drop that field template in, things get stupid. I might have misused the whole day to try to figure out why something didn't overwrite until I learned by looking at my source that fields get overwritten based on the field name. Your field name needs to be very unique when you do this, um, which is a good example of showing you how you can add new theme suggestions. Because um, how Drupal does it, it goes, look through your folders and say template slash A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Which template do I hit first? The first one I hit, I take that, done, and I move on. Which means that in this example, you know, I have my template slash ses, set node HTML, the trick, but it's the template that is in the A folder that's going to get written. 
how I can do that is kind of our whole specificity inside of our templates. Um, so I give it a more specific name, as we can see in our template suggestions, and that's going to be hidden in. So I begin to do this pattern instead. instead. Um, so the idea is that on your file name, you're going to get these long, long file names. Each file name is going to be, each part of the file name is going to be separated with three underscores. Because one underscore can be inside of a name, like a field name. That will be, every space in the field name will be an underscore. So you need two underscores between, um, between the identifier, one underscore, and one underscore for the name, and then three underscores between each, so you're going to separate them up. Um, so you're going to end up with like something like field, the name of the field, bundle, the name of the bundle, type, the name of the type. These names are going to be long. Here's the beautiful thing. It makes sense when you look at them, and you can act, you can see that all the way. Um, the way you do this is using this thing, the hook theme suggestion, hook alter. <sighs> so many hooks. Um, what we do here is basically this. I have my vanilla as my first. That's my theme name. Theme suggestion, the fields. And now in my field, um, you can see the really dirty trick uh, I do, where I do above is vanilla theme suggestions. I put that in as a theme suggestion name. The reason I do that is now when I look at my source code, I can actually figure out what goes on. I'm not the brightest person on earth, and when I have 25 different template suggestions, it's kind of nice to have that in. And then I begin to group them up so I get them as specific as possible. So we end up with something like this. You can see how specific I can go in and find each template, because the templates do not care where they live. Um, so this is my way of like securing that I do not overwrite my own stuff. A bundle, bundle is uh, the content type, but by the machine name, uh, Drupal calls it bundle, and I, and I was like, what should I call this? Should I call it content type? I was like, uh, I think I'm just going to use the name bundle, and yes, I also get confused for it. There is a clever Dane down there that has an answer for this. Ooh, it's the entity type. As a Drupal front end, I really don't care. <laughs> See, now he's, for the camera, I have an angry Dane looking at me, bro, like. Mm. I've, oh, I've been here for 10 years, what do I know? God damn it. Okay, moving fast on. This was the first troll, you get a sticker. <laughs> So you have the theme name, and then you have the hooks. The hooks over there is like the name of like the field, the page, the HTML, that way. And that's how you can grab it, and now you can begin to modify it. It's really, really simple, but it ends up with this. This is my, my code widget. I built my own code viewer, so I can like post code on my blog, and it gets like pretty color-coded with Prism. Um, so I thought, hey, let's do a meta. Let me show how to build a code viewer and show the code for the code viewer. Um, so this is my whole widget. And you can see I have my code CSS file. <gasps> the CSS file in the same folder. I'm so excited because now I can find my CSS that's specific only for this thing. Then I have uh, code.svg. Holy shit, SVG files because SVG is the shit. It's uber awesome. And you know what we're going to do with this file? We're going to include it directly into the template. So you're going to have no HTTP request. Mm, built directly into Twig. It's sweet. Um, then I have some other icons because I was fooling around. I have paragraph that's code. I'm using the paragraph module to build this. Paragraph module is the bomb, by the way. It's, it's kind of saved my life multiple times. Um, and then I have these Prism, um, and Prism is, is uh, the color coding view, I think, that does some magic JavaScript stuff, and I just jump in. So here's my code widget. My code widget is pretty simple. It has a, a field name, you know, a, a file name. It has a, a language my code is on, and then it has the code. And, and basically, what, what it does is this. Um, it color codes my little code snippets. So I can now push little code snippets out on my web blog, and they are pretty and viewable. Um, so what it does is, let's take a look at this, if it want to play. Um, as you can see, the markup here is, uh, what's that? Let's see, ooh, SVG inline. Mm. Doesn't that just make you feel good? Am I the only one who's crazy excited about SVG? Uh, there's like one thumbs up. Like, in a year, you're going to be crazy excited about HVG. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. It's amazing. Anyways, this is, by the way, Drupal. It's not a security issue. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> this is my own file put into Git, pushed up on my server. This is, by the way, Drupal markup just out the box, nothing else. This is like basic stuff. This is, might going to be a little bit of a change if you used to work in Drupal 7. Anyways, back to this. So we have all these different files. How do we build this? Well, here's the first. Uh, is that too dark? 
Can you still see it? I hope so. Whew. Ah, because all the code examples are written like this. It could be like really fun. Anyways, so um, the thing we're going to do here is we're going to start, start by from the template, instead of defining a library I call in from anywhere else, with a pre process and stuff, I do it all from my template file. That's the whole idea. Everything you do in your theme, you do that from your Twig file. If I want to call in a library, and a library is where we define our CSS and JavaScript, um, the reason for that is that modules also do that, so that this is the way you will inject, you, know, you will add in CSS and JavaScript to your, to your files. The thing is, when you begin to call them on each file, this begins to be really, really sweet, because why would I call in CSS if it's not needed on a specific, like, if I have a, something for a form, why would I add that to all of my CSS? There could be a reason for that, I know, but here I call it in this library, and down here, I do an inline SVG thing. I actually include the SVG directly. So I can still edit my SVG files from my edit, from my whatever graphic program I do. I just ask uh, Twig to include it. Um, and inside of my library, it uh, comes up here. Inside of my library, I have a library called Code Snippet. And that is defined with two CSS files, my Code CSS and my Prism CSS and a JavaScript file that is also in there. And they all is in my same folder. So I do not now have to jump around between different folders. It's all right there. Um, uh, 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 yes, um, and then if you want to look at the whole, like the including, um, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing the include and then specifying the whole path down to wherever my SVG file is, and now what Twig is doing is taking that SVG file, you can do this with an HTML file as well, you can even go, go deeper down with include, and you can actually take, um, you can do your footer, uh, with regions inside of the HTML template, you can take that, put that into an include file as well, and drop it somewhere else where you want to drop it. And you can like pass variables into include files and stuff. Includes are pretty awesome. It feels like, to me, like very old school PHP 3, the first time I did an include file, that was just, bam, this is cool. I can organize my stuff. Yeah, I can see all the old people who are like, yeah, yeah. All you new fancy JavaScript people, you're like, why is this so fast? <laughs> Anyways, so here's my SVG file. Mm, I can even go in and hand edit it. That's like, when you begin to do this, it's pretty amazing. Um, and another thing I'm doing in this example, just to show this off, is like normally when we include a field, um, you would include that whole field and that would then be like called to another template. If you just want to get the data out without the attribute, without all of that whistle and bang, in this example, I just need the, I need the exact language because Prism uses this language uh, variable to figure out how it would color code stuff. So if it's CSS file, it's a YAML file, if it's a PHP file or an HTML file. So I only need the raw value. I don't need anything else with that. I could do content.field underscore code underscore language, that's my field. Um, take the first uh, out of the array and then just give me the markup. Then it will only give me that data. There's probably somebody who's gonna say that is something, something, but we can get this data out. Um, Right now, anything else you want to put out, if there's multiple values and so forth, we cannot get them out this way. And we cannot get them out with attributes and so forth on it, so you can have accessibility issues around this. So it's not a, always do it this way. I kind of like it when it's just like a field name or something like that I need, where I don't need to like reuse um, our markup components. Whew. How good are we on time right now? I only have it for half an hour? Good. So are people kind of following this whole concept of like rethinking like, hey, my templates still live in my template folder, but I organize everything inside of like separate elements. Um, good thing is I have one more example and then we can actually like, I'm not even gonna do live coding, we do questions and so forth, but it's, are people like following this whole concept? It kind of makes sense, right? That's the, that's, this is actually one of the beauties around Drupal 8, which I begin to really enjoy by building it, is you get these idea in your head and because everything is, uh, this is back to the whole visibility thing. We want to build systems that are usually, that's easy for us to use. And especially this thing, that is easy for me to debug in six years or four years or, you know, in my example, 20 minutes after I've written a line of code, I cannot remember what I did because I moved on to somewhere else. Um, so this is kind of the ideas for it. Um, All right, so one of the things, the number one question I've gotten besides how am I doing this, and this is people hunting me down on Twitter and Facebook and all kinds of other places, like, Morten, how do, I, how do I add a class into my menu links? How do I do this with menu links? Because menus are kind of essential for a website, right? We kind of use them to navigate around. But when you look at them, they are kind of a pain in the ass to do anything with. It's just have that link thing and you can't do anything with it. Um, and I begin to joke around with SVG, and so in my head, I was like, wait a minute, if I can do all this in Twig, I wonder if I can 
put in an SVG file as my link. How do I do that and not break to exactly? There's one person here in the front row go like, <sighs> do you think, do you think this is going to be fucking awesome what I'm going to show now? Okay. <laughs> so um, this started out as a holy quest like three weeks ago because um, Drupal does things also based on security. So suddenly now we have the front end versus the security team. That is always a nice fight, right? Um, so what I wanted to do is I want to put in SVG files inside of my links, and I want to still have a link to be active. When you click on it, it needs to get this is active class. Is active is added by JavaScript by Drupal. I do not know why. Something about speed or something, something. That's how Drupal's menu work. So I started out by rewriting Drupal's menus completely. That was a good idea, right? Because now I've hard-coded markup inside of my template and I cannot move my elements around. Um, and then we begin to play around with it. 36 hours ago, we fixed this issue. Um, and this is going to be a little bit advanced, but it's so fucking cool. So let's see here what we're doing. It is. So this is my website, by the way. And yes, it may be going to be broken on some sites. I've not had the time to fix all these things because we wanted to inject SVG inside of links and not break Drupal. So let's see what this does. Um, so here's my menu. Uh, and, you know, you can put a mouse over it and it puts stuff out. And I can. this is just to prove that this is not hard-coded. There's nothing as good as like giving an example where it just hard-coded everything and be like, well, this is how you maybe can do it in like, three years. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually doing this kind of crazy thing because I want to be able to like give my, uh, my icons a name and, and put them in. So I put in a fancy title and something, um, and I do this pipe. I do a pipe, and then I put in a name. And now we can save it, and I've moved it around, and let's see. So and let's see if it actually works. Ta-da! All right, so I've not broken the menus. I'm still using the menus as they go along. Um, Let's take next little example. So let's look at the markup, what's happening in here. Um, here's my link. There's a li tag in it. Damn. Mm. I'm using a use file. This is even sexier SVG stuff. So now my file from all of my icons is up on the server, and they're now cached. This makes all the DevOps boys like, ooh, thank you for not adding 6,000 SVG files. So yes, here's my one file, and now can we use it all over my site. Um, so. If we like, let's see, uh, 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 here we go. So what's going on here? Up there is my is active class is still, and you can see the link is pink, because I thought that would be a good, I always use hot pink as my test color for anything. It's the best color ever. And why? Because it makes my themes fancy. <laughs> um, so I have is active class up on it. I have an SVG inline directly inside of the link. Um, and even better, I have a pure CSS tooltip. So now I need to add data attributes in, I need to add some custom classes in, and I need to inject an SVG file using use, not even just injecting just with an, an include, because if you do an include directly and you do not have the file and tweak, like can't find the file, it will, um, it will terminate that template that calls it. So suddenly my menu disappeared. I was like, what happened? Oh, I cannot figure out how to spell my own things. I'm an idiot. Because Rocket, oh, sometimes it's hard for me to figure that out. Anyways, so let's go over and see. We have menu icons. Those bad boys, these are the icons. Look how cute they look. Even better, here's the file for them. As you can see, there's an ID outside of each of them. So here's how it's going to go. Um, here's my data that comes out, my description. I'm going to use my description and put in an identifier on it. So my identifier is here. Uh, I'm just doing a pipe on it, because normally you know, everybody in Drupal will be like, well, if you want to add like an icon to your stuff, you should really create a module and put it into a module and put it up to Drupal core so other people can use it. Oh, thank you, but I'm on a fucking deadline, and I'm sitting in an airport, and I'm about to push this stuff, and how many hours is it going to take me to figure out how to write Drupal 8 code, push that stuff up where, understanding how object-oriented coding works when I just want to take a fucking path, pipe that shit, and put it in and get done with my life, <laughs> right? So that's what I'm going to do. If somebody go like, oh, you cannot do that, I'm like, I can't. Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to, like, stop me publishing my site? Anyways, so here we go. The idea is I, I, I take this like after the pipe and I then use my menu SVG file and I can use that as an ID. So now I can begin to like put in a name and then it'll find that name and it'll put out that icon. Exactly, one person got it. I've been a little bit excited about this the last three days and kind of like, 
we can do this stuff, we can do this stuff. So here it is. Uh, so here I called rocket, and you got rocket down there. Um, so we're gonna call that part in of the file. Um, so how are we gonna do that? Well, it's simple. You know, we split it up, we take the ID, we, um, you know, we call it an ISVG file, we create the markup, we sneak that into Tweak because we had to sneak it in because security. Somebody thinks that SVG files by default are insecure, even if I put them up on my own server, it's in my own Git repository, and that's where it comes from. They're like, no, that's a security issue. That was the, fir the first reaction I got on this when I put the code out. I thought I would get like the front enders of the world go like, mm, damn, this is sweet. No. Um, SVG files is a security issue. <laughs> like, thank you for that. Thank you for killing my, my mojo on it. So here's the, here's the whole file on it. It's a little bit complicated, but this is where it's at. So we start up here. We split up our, uh, our variables. Um, I create three new variables. And one of those variables, I will create the whole markup part that takes all this stuff and put in the name and put in the, 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 the elements that I put inside of my link. Then inside of my link, now I do an inline template we create a Twig template inside of the template. Yes, I didn't get it at first either. Like, what the fuck is this, Lowry? And Lowry is like, he's finished. He's like, you don't even understand. Um, but we have a Twig template inside of a Twig template. Now we can begin to pass in whatever we want. So sorry, security guys, but I found a loophole. And here's one of the things. This is how we work. You know, and why do we work this way? Because I have an end result. The end result is the layout, is the sign of this. My client do not care about all of these other issues. I don't get paid unless I get this stuff in. I do know that if we break it all down and the, and the security and stuff, the server burns. Well, then we're going to have a whole other issue. But if the first thing I imagine when I go into Drupal is, well, Drupal can't do these things, I'm probably going to leave Drupal again. I mean, how many front-enders have been happy in Drupal 7? Let me get a raise of hands. Yes, exactly. And why? Because we could not do what we wanted to do. So it doesn't matter. All these things doesn't matter. Your first experience with Drupal 7 is this smack in the face. And it's some kind of technical description of why you cannot do this. And like, fuck that. Pretty please, with sugar on top, give me my fucking code and let me do my job. Because I have six million different browsers out there I need to fix. So, sorry for the rant, but... Uh, we're doing inline template, and then down here we do a render, and then we add in all of these special classes and data stuff. It's going to come up bigger. So first of all, here's my split. Um, I do a variable set description. I take item original links, get description. Then I do this trick function split, and then I search for the pattern I want to split on. I search for two spaces and a pipe. Fair enough. Then I take the link title. That's description dot zero. That's the first part of the pipe. And then description dot one. That's my icon ID. Um, all right. Yeah, split is a trick function. Um, so every time you do a pipe on something, you can do crazy stuff with it. It's basically, like, here's my variable name, pipe, make awesome and pretty. That's kind of like, and then you can pass in, you can pass all kinds of stuff into it. Every, pretty much every PHP function, you can actually pipe in here. You can do like, make this, make this uh, variable uppercase, uh, remove, I'm not sure if you can actually do regular expressions on it, but I'm, oh yeah, okay, we can actually do regular expressions on it. So we can like go, go, yeah, some people can. This particular Dane up here cannot. <laughs> I have, tr I actually, the first theme I built in Drupal, 4.5, 4.7, sorry, to get menus, menu link, no, menu images. No, images into menu. That was way back when we did like sliding doors and stuff. Anybody remember those good days? Yeah. Image, images directly into the menu, good times. Now we're kind of back. Now it's just these sexy SVG files. To do that in Drupal 4.7, I had to do a regular expression on the, on the whole menu structure. Yes, we come f far away. Anyways, so here's my icon name, right? Rocket, and take that. So this is basically what we do. We just take this thing, and now I can begin to pass in data. My end user can pass in data. I can pass this stuff in without writing these things. Yes, I know. Oh, the end user cannot figure this out. Well, if I explain it to him, and the end user in this case is me, so I, I will put up a little sticky note back, on, back home on my computer. Morton, remember the first pipe is your icon, because apparently I cannot remember that, right? Anyways, here we go to the next one, the SVG icon. So I have my, my, my span with a class on. Uh, I have SVG view box to show how big it's going to be. And then I've got the use link and link, x link, href, and then the path to my whole, um, to my SVG file. This I simplified because the file name is so long that you couldn't see it. Um, but if you grab my code, it's all up on GitHub, by the way. 
I kind of need to remove the icons because I think they're licensing. Um, but we can go to that later on. Then I take my SVG icon ID and I use that and then I just print out my title, clean and sweet. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's, and here we go. So, and then my SVG is gonna use, so, this SVG file calling that in. Does that make sense, by the way? You have an SVG file that has all these IDs and then with using use, I can like pipe in and call it directly. Uh, it doesn't work on IE, of course, because that's how live is. There is a, there's a, a JavaScript uh, library that can fix that. Um, this is just on my side, and I was kind of like, you know what? I don't fucking care, I'm just gonna rock this stuff. And this is all, if somebody goes like, well, why don't you just put it in with like clean CSS? That is not the whole issue here. The issue is I can inject SVG directly into my menus. That makes me happy. Um, and then inside of my, in my template, uh, so what I'm doing here, this is where it gets get tricky, right? You can see I do a variable set menu link, I do type inline template, and then inside of the template I have my SVG icon, the SVG icon we just created, and then I do a context of the SVG icon, and now I'm gonna get it in. Whew, here's the next step. This is the link. Link, menu link, pound render. Pound render now takes this menu link and renders that through Drupal's normal way of doing it. So we'll just inject all of this stuff into it. Then I have my item.url, which is just the URL for whatever we're gonna go with. This is like menu stuff. And then the next thing is, inside of the variable, you can see I have a curly bracket. There do class, uh, colon, and then I put in the classes I need. What? Um, so I will come to that because security. <laughs> they basically, um, we don't, in, in front end, we don't call it cock blocking, we call it code blocking. And that was kind of what happened. Um, gonna come to that in, in just a second. Um, so here, you know, I, I put in the specific class I want to put in. So if you want to put specific classes into your menu as a link, just say, hey, I just need this class in this menu, that's how I'm going to do it. The next thing I'm doing, I'm doing data-balloon. I put in my link title. Uh, balloon, if you go and search for balloon.css, balloon is like this sweet little uh, CSS library that just adds balloons to your, to your links and stuff. If it has the data-balloon, it will take that data and put it into that little balloon you saw on my menu, it came out black. And then I also do the um, position for it and tells it, it should go down. I would prefer, though, to do it this way instead. Just doing, like, set a variable, pass in markup, and push it in. The problem is that we have a whitelist for what we accept through markup, and SVG is not one of them. The reason for that is, like, if you upload, if you have SVG uploaded, that's like a gaping security hole. It's kind of like saying, hey, just upload your JavaScript to our site. We're just going to execute it, because what kind of dumb things could you do? So, yes, there is a security issue. I'm not going to, like, not accept that, but here it is on my own server. It's me who created the file. It's hard-coded inline. This is not a security anymore. I mean, even that I did get this one from the security, and the, the answer, as always, is no. Um, this is uh, to one of the other points. Uh, like, when we do these kind of things, by the way, did that all, all that crazy shit I did, did that make any kind of sense? Uh, kind of. The good thing is you can take it, you can feel it, and you can play around with it. And that's kind of the thing that we really should begin to do in this Drupal world. Like, do all these crazy things as we want to do them. Because, um, you know, the, basically the thing I, I did, you know, take a description, split it out, like, move it around, play around with it, and figure out how to get it in. The big hurdle here was, like, I could not just do regular Drupal stuff to it. I needed to create an inline template. So Drupal didn't even know what kind of my... I found this basically a whole how to inject stuff. That's kind of bad. We need to create these tools. So that's kind of the, 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 one of the things that I think we really need to work around and figure out how to do it better. So I see the theme system as our system. This is how we as front enders can begin to build stuff, to think stuff and, and make it work. Um, so we need to figure find these things so we don't constantly block ourselves. Um, so um, as the last thing, let's, um, Let's talk a little bit about the future. This is like just crazy examples of what you can do. To me, adding, injecting stuff into the links and controlling the links and figure out what goes on to them has been like kind of a little bit of a holy grail quest for me, actually for almost 10 years. I'm so sad I could not find the site I built 10 years ago with the regular expressions on the menu. Um, because back then, why would I use you know, that whole GitHub kind of thing? Because you know, my code works the first time and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the kind of developer who, you know, um, I measure once and I cut 25 times. 
It's not always a good thing, yes. There's people here I've been working with be like, yes, we know. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I, saw the, I saw some of the Dries note this morning, and I saw, hey, we want to have preprocessors into core. And I was sitting over in the green room. I think it was a good thing that I was, it was only me and Davina, a German developer in the room, that was there because the level of cursing that came out of my mouth came up to whole new levels. Here's the reason for it. Um, four years ago, we had seriously talks about pushing. Can anybody remember 960 grid system? Yeah. All right. How would that be if that was forced down your throat in Drupal 8? That would have been fun, right, because that was future proof. Because the things we write right now is future proof forever. Forever, ever. No, they're not. I mean, I've been a big fan of preprocessors for years. I don't use preprocessors anymore. Why not? Because I figured out I don't need them. Because I don't build websites for, for IE6 anymore. Um, I built Drupal sites in Drupal 8 where I can control my classes. I can build my stuff in another way. If we begin to inject every kind of new Kool-Aid com that comes in, we are beginning to make some seriously dumb mistakes. What we need to do in our future is we need to clear everything out so we can build whatever the thing is that we want to build on top of it. Not the other way around, not putting new stuff in. The funny thing is, I put it in as a comment here to Dries that says, how about we also put 960 nine, GS into code now, we are at it. I might, it's a little bit, is it called snarky or is it sassy, this kind of commenting is? So here comes Nathan Smith, the author of 960. He goes like, what? No, it's so old, responsible for is sure this is a joke, right? And we talk back and forth, he got like, Phew. okay, pound small core. <laughs> small core was a thing we had up six or seven years ago. The whole idea was like, making Drupal as small as possible out of the box so we can build on top of it. That's kind of what we want to do in the front end. Um, and that's been like the, the whole concept of this. So I can say just now that I will use every inch of my body to make sure that absolutely no element of Kool-Aid get into the front end. I will battle it, I will burn it down, I will find my ax, and yes, I have an ax. I will find a Viking ship, and we will go to fucking town, wherever it needs to be removed from. Because every time we put these things in, how many use underscore? You know, underscore we put into Drupal 8 core? Sweet, now we have that to move around. Contact module, wonderful thing to move around. The discussion board, hey, do we still have votes? Anyways, we cannot put whatever new Kool-Aid in into core as we need to do it because then we need to maintain it. Drupal 7 was said to be, what, a two-year release cycle? Drupal 7 came out January 2011. My watch don't have years on it, but I'm pretty sure it's five or six years ago. Um, Drupal 8 is going to be around for a long time. We are not just going to put whatever you think right now is the solution for everything. The front end constantly changes. That's the only thing we know. We also know we do not know what kind of browsers we are going to theme this stuff for, so we also need to be able to change that. So every time, every time we put in any idea of this is how you're going to do it, we are going to fail. So if you want to build whatever this end user experience is going to be, and you think you can just ignore the front end, here's your JSON feed. Work with that. Um, and with that, and that like kind of bitchy comment on it, no, it's more like, hey, we need to think above this thing. I know that as an end user, you hope to get these easy solutions. If we can't build them, it's us who's going to build these things at the end of the day. And if you give me like this chunk of markup, I can't build anything on it. So. That was my first 45 minutes of rant. Can we do 45 more? <laughs> um, no. Um, here's the thing. Um, it has been an enjoyable uh, three, four years. This is, this is actually a couple of years ago. This is Jen Lampton. Is she in the room? If Jen is here somewhere, you find her. Go and hawk her. She's like one of the initial takers. This is the day we got, um, we got Twig into core. Uh, she was very happy. I had a session in uh, a bad camp that year called The Angry Thema, which was an Full 60-minute, full-on rant that yelled at everybody in the room why Drupal 7 sucked ass and what we needed to change. Um, I went from being the angry themer to the um, grown-ass man walking to all toward my room and had to like take a detour because I had a little tear in my eye. Yes, sensible Viking. Um, this is the group that I've been working on this so far, a bunch of these people. We need more people. We need more people to come and help us out. Um, all of this stuff we have been building has been, it's very much uphill constantly. Um, 
I don't feel that the front end gets the respect in our community that we should get. I get fucking pissed off when I see these kind of surveys coming out and it's like, at the end of the day, it's us who have to build this stuff and you're not giving me the tools for it. Um, I know that maybe people thought that I've been there. I don't hate developers. I love my developers. I love the fact what they're building. I hate that I cannot build the beautiful product that we should build for them. And that's the thing we need to change. Uh, and we can only do that by getting more people in. Um, so you know, come and join our little army. This is me and Joel on our weekly Tweak uh, Thursday meetings. Uh, we do, um, we do a, a Skype call where we sit and discuss where we're going to be, where we're going to be at, how things are going around. Um, we have done another thing, which I got a lot of flack for. You know, that how everybody else in the world, they're using IRC as the, like, the main communi communication channel because IRC is just ace, right? <laughs> if you're a developer with like 10, 20 years on your back, you know IRC is just the shit. Um, here's the thing we tried then. I wonder if these designers and front-end people uh, are using this thing called Slack. Or well, there maybe is. Let's set up a Slack channel. I got a little bit of Slack for it. Yeah, I've been, I've been having that in my head for a week. We're like, hey, hey. Anyways, we set up the Slack channel. We got a little bit of shit for it because it, this is outside the normal Drupal world. This is a commercial product that does this. I, I, I really don't care. This is about us as funders having a place where we can communicate. So this is our Slack channel. You go, jump in on this uh, Drupal, Drupal trick, that Slack, that HerokuApp.com. You go in there and you just put in your credentials and you go. Um, there's like 10, 20 different rooms. This is where we keep the majority of all the discussions. They're like, hey, can you help me out with this? We are still using IRC. We still have that channel. We have not abandoned that. We just know that by default, there's a ton of special new people coming in that uses Slack instead. So let's not ignore that as a fact. Um, else, IRC is the place we're also hanging out. Um, we did plan this night to do like a front-end meetup kind of thing somewhere. Um, but as usual at DrupalCon, like fixing anything. And I, got, I, got, I might have used a week of my life to figure out how to inject SVG icons <laughs> into Drupal Core. <laughs> to a Drupal link. Um, so we kind of is canceling that thing, uh, but find, uh, find me, I will help you pointing out to the right people, doing, especially doing lunch, um, and, and let's talk. Because um, this front end, we're finally at a place where we can actually build it the way we want to build it. And to me, that's very exciting, but we need more people to come in and help out. Because it's else, I mean, at some point, you get a little bit tired of working uphill, uphill, uphill all the time. So with that and 10 minutes left, any questions? Oh. All right, so no questions, which is, I mean, I, I, that was a question. Uh, See. I'm so happy you asked me that question. Um, first of all, use Twitter is a thing I personally use a lot. Use pound Drupal trick to like yell stuff out. Um, questions, comments, feedback, please send them to me. If, if this does not make sense, whatever it was, uh, how you feel about it. Um, I'm Morton DK, the happy themer. As you can hear, I'm all happiness, right? <laughs> My slides is on tinyurl.com, theming-d8-nola. Uh, this is this whole slide set is up there. The video is not up there. I am going to publish all of this code on my brand new blog when I got it to work in all the browsers because now I have time for that. Uh, I'm going to post that hopefully during this conference. Um, I'm going to keep on posting more and more of these things because a lot of this is new thinking. And at this point, uh, as, as Cutter, our core committer, said that, Morten, uh, you do know that you're kind of like our idea man. It's kind of out of my brain stuff comes from, which is kind of terrifying because... No, only my head. I mean, we need more people to come in and help out, think, discuss these things, play around with them, especially when you have the discussions. On Friday, doing code sprints, um, really want to see you all there coming in and helping out. And helping out is also just sitting down and discussing where do we want to push this? What are our wishes? What do we work with right now? How can we change these things? All of these things is important. Um, coming up to me, Carter, Joel, whoever else have been active in this and actually commenting on these things uh, means a lot to us because um, a lot of this coding is done at very late night uh, hours, um, very much alone, just you in front of a laptop and figuring out it actually means something, means something to us. So pretty please come with some feedback to it. Um, 
A couple of more links I have here is the theme guide, uh, the standard for CSS, Smacks, and uh, the Twig documentation. Um, there's coming out a new bunch of also of tools to use, um, which I unfortunately didn't have time to because I got ranted up in Dries's keynote, um, which I did not put in. Um, so this is the same slide. <sighs> Anyways, and with that, and actually, as far as I can see, seven minutes left, five minutes left. Any last minute questions? The inline templates? Um, okay, so the idea on the inline template is basically you create and you can render that template. So you can, you can put other, uh, uh, you can kind of like, it's kind of having one template, having another template, then you, whatever comes into that template, you can then like, work around that. And that's why I did that whole horrible hack by putting all the, the SVG things in. So it begins to become a, um, an inline template. It's, that didn't make sense. <laughs> Maybe I don't even understand it, but I made it work. <laughs> Sorry for that. Other questions? Um, so what do you do around the administration theme? One of the things we really have not worked on on Drupal ADS is forms. Forms is kind of tricky to work with, and I'm sorry for that, but we only had that much time. We chose to fix the fields first. Forms is definitely, the, it's in forms and component-based theming was a new concept. Wim Lears and especially John Alpin have been working on. It's coming, it's a, one of the big things we're expecting to see soon. I personally have forms as my number one goal to fix so we can begin to rebuild the end user experience. So, so the question is, what do I think about contrib-based themes? So back in Drupal 7, you will always download a contrib uh, module to fix stuff. The thing is, in Drupal 7, we needed to have all these base themes to clean out all the stuff that came out of Drupal. I created one, John Alpin, I created one. There's like a whole ton of them. Base theme in Drupal 8 is a complete other thing because they do not need to clean out. Um, a base theme like Bootstrap is just going to do Bootstrap's thing. Um, the themes and what I hope to see is we're actually going to get pretty themes. So instead of they just be, here's how I modify all my markup, it's going to be, here's my pretty, pretty ice cream theme that looks pretty on all of these browsers and has this design. So we can actually go back and have design themes. That's my secret little dream, uh, which I know a lot of people would really like because, hey, I want to have my, can I get my site to look pretty really fast and just get going? And that's kind of a thing we can finally begin to do. Um, and the other thing is, when you start your theme, basically what I normally do, I just take like stable or classy, I clone that whole folder, I move it over, I rename the few files that need to be renamed, done, and then I, jo then I go to town on it. That's kind of the, my normal workflow. So I, I don't even think about there's a base theme. I just think about like, here's all my template files, because that is the kind of number one thing in, in Drupal 8. It's everything is a file and there's a fuck ton of them. Um, no matter what you do. And if you don't organize them in some way, you're going to be like, this is an issue. Um, there was kind of the joke was like when we killed the last theme function, I was like, so in about six months, everybody's going to hate me because we have you know, 200 template files and what are you going to do with them? Um, hopefully this is an inspiration of how you can rethink it. It's kind of pre-thinking uh, the whole component thing. I don't even know if this is a component. I call it a component because that was the name in my head. So maybe we need to give it another name. I don't know. Um, know where this is going to go on. I hope this was, oh, yes. No, so here's the thing. Um, yeah. I have, I have no idea how people who, I don't, I don't, so here's the thing, I don't ha hate SAS, I just figured out that my life got easier without using Grunt and Gulp and all of these 200 other tools. I was like, hey, I just write my trick file and my CSS and I'm, and I'm done. Hey, I'm happy. I don't have a Grunt build that suddenly that gets destroyed because some, some developer rage quit somewhere and remove his repositories and then suddenly nothing works anymore in Node world. Yes, that was a cheap, cheap stab at Node, I know, but hey, what, what can I do? Um, no, I do think that the, all the things that SAS and preprocess have done over the years is amazing. It has pushed away we're thinking CSS, it pushed away what we can do. It's the reason we're gonna get variables into the browser now. We actually have them, Firefox have had them for a year. CSS variables is available now in last Chrome, which is fucking amazing. Um, 
It's not available yet in Safari. We're waiting for that. It's going to come at some point. Um, and that's like one of the reasons I'm like, hey, I don't think I'm going to use SaaS in a year. Maybe you are. Built it your own way. That's the thing we can do in Drupal 8 now. You can build your stuff as you want. If you think this is like, hey, Morton, this is too complicated. I'm going to build all of my SaaS things this way or that way. I'm going to do it in another way. Go and do that. Uh, I know that John Alpin on Thursday has his uh, new version of his Sin theme. Uh, which is, he's doing things I don't even understand what he's doing. He's also rethinking the whole thing. And that's the thing we can do now. We can rethink the way we are building our stuff. And as we do that, we can build actually an amazing front end and instead of this media call kind of like, uh, I don't like to work in the front end. I want to have it to be a wonderful experience for all of us. So did that answer the question or did I just begin to rant? Yeah. Uh, you, you kind of can't. Yeah, yeah, no, it's going to be a complete mess. Sorry, SAS fanboys, I showed you a technique where you know, I am superior. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is all recorded, right? Oh, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to remove SAS. I'm just saying that I live a simpler life now. It's kind of like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've used SAS for, for years. I think it was wonderful, but here's the thing. I begin to drink uh, old fashions, right? Like old fashioned is the best drink in the world. You got a glass, you got a big fucking rock, you got bourbon, you got a little bit of sugar, a little bit of bitter, and then, you know, orange peel, and if you're really fancy, a cherry. Bam. When old fashioned came back, when they really began to start up back, and I think it was 1920, um, one of the reasons they, the bartenders began to make them again was they were so tired of making these bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger cocktails. So they kind of want to like go back to just do the simple, clean like drink that just works out. Um, and that's kind of my, the thing I'm on right now. I'm kind of like, let me go back to the roots. Funny enough, the, the CSS framework I'm writing right now is called Old Fashioned. I call my technique, get this, you know how it's modern when you use SAS? This is postmodern front end. <laughs> um, and I know yesterday at a bar there were some guys even coming up with a hashtag for it. <laughs> and so if something suddenly explodes and I'm in the middle of it, some, some of this is kind of dumb, it's, yeah, it is. But it's just rethinking some of these ways. And we can do that in Drupal 8. That's the beauty of it. Like, hey, let me do it this way. Let me do it that way. Do that, yeah. Pomo was the word. Is it Pomo? I can't remember. We, it's going to come out. All right, more questions, or should I let you all go? There. Maybe. No, so, so the libraries, what the libraries do is that they, you can like build them in and they should be aggregated based on base or theme or um, like layout, that whole smacks way. They should be aggregated that way. Um, there is going to be issues with this, I know by default, because that was not how we thought the system from the ground up. Um, and the reason I'm doing these things is also to figure out like, how can we build these things the best way. Because front-enders will constantly come up with new ideas to fix stuff. And we need to figure out how we could do it in the best way without breaking Drupal and making our DevOps boys and girls angry at us. Because then they're going to be like, no, nope, I'm not going to publish that. And going to be like, well, we kind of... Uh, then, then you have this whole yelling thing. And I kind of... I actually just want to be happy, right? And just when I walk down the street, don't have to find a developer and threaten him with my ex. <laughs> no, but they, they do get aggregated and they do get compiled. Uh, and that is a whole thing that Drupal does for us. So as soon as you go to CSS aggregation, JS aggregation, it, and cases it out for you. So, uh, and the, the whole thing about adding all the, the files, definitely you add a library for them each time. It's like, so if you rebuild them, Drupal, if, if you have like a form CSS file, every time I add, put in a form template and I call my form library and I put that in, Drupal doesn't care if it calls it 6,000 times because it's already there. That's kind of the whole idea behind the libraries. Um, and if you have a module that says, hey, if you use that, that library, you can then do something else with it or your theme can even do that as well. Um, David Hernandez wrote a blog article about it. Uh, blog article, an article about uh, libraries and what you can do with it. Um, yesterday afternoon, um, there's a developer who actually wrote a, a debugging tool to figure out which kind of libraries is available on your page so you can get control over that. So we're beginning to get the tools we also need now, like five, six months down the road. Um, and 
I'm pretty sure this is like the, just the first time we're seeing somebody beginning to think stuff outside of the normal Drupal circle. Um, I know what John is doing Thursday. It's a buff, so go down and check it out. Uh, Thursday afternoon, I think, is I'm really excited to see what he came up with of crazy ideas. And we need to f see more of these ideas so our front end becomes epic and we can build the user experience for our content editors. All right, with that little rant and actually going over time, so I'm keeping my own tradition, I will now let you set you free. Come and fight the front end with me. It's fun. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Hey.